crushing the guards. U.S. advance, Iraq delay. While the U.S. 2nd Armored Cavalry was pinning the Iraqi Tawakalna Guards Division, the U.S. 3rd Armored Division moved around to the north for the kill. As night set in, the lead tanks of the 1st Brigade and 7th Cavalry closed in on the Iraqis. Yeah, this is gonna be another armored massacre as far as I can see. And if it's a night fight, it means the enemy can see up to 40 hexes and we can probably see around half that if we play with the Iraqis. I'm inclined to do it because it will, we'll get it over faster that way. It'll cut the time in one third pretty much. Oh, we, fuck, we have a half the map full of beer units. This could be bad. Super bad. Because that means the enemy also has a yeah, visibility of 5. So everyone is basically blind unless they have some sort of tech. We can see the 20 more or less. They can probably see a vision of 0. So yeah, good anti-air unit. Can't even see in the dark. These with their T-72s, they can see to 20. Fire control 20, armor is respectable. Some range finding. Yeah, this is a. Uh, it's not a bad tank. Holy shit, there's a lot of troops. But this this doesn't make any sense because of the low visibility. Yeah, we basically will die similar to in the previous mission because. There's no other way to do this. These, these anti-tank missile launchers, for example, have no vision. So they can fire up to 5 hexes at the enemy, while the enemy can fire at 40, at up to 40 hexes. It, it this just doesn't make any sense. If I move, I'm gonna die. If I don't, I'm gonna die. This is the same shit all over again. There's no point setting distances because uh, we can't, we won't fire until they're within 20 hexes anyway. Problem being again that even if they would burn through the center here, they can easily see my units here. I couldn't see them. So, yeah. We have artillery. We have mortars, which basically means nothing. Smoke will only hamper us, so yeah. This is gonna be one of those click enter and enter and just watch your units dying. Holy shit, we killed something. And we're dead. Ooh, they have. Heavy armor versions of I Abrams tanks. Yeah, I can't see the enemy at all. This is good for us though, because they'll wait they'll basically waste their shots and they don't recharge so it'll take a few turns for them to recharge it. Uh, this unit that they're firing on is dead the moment uh, a single actual tank shoots at it. So the Bradley firing on it is just a waste of Bradley shots and ammunition. Yeah, Abrams took care of it immediately. And you're dead. We're gonna reduce our reaction. 
might not have been a horrible idea because uh, then their vision uh, advantage wouldn't be that great. But I don't see it making a huge difference. Because it's still there, the advantage is still there. Yeah, these are solid tanks, I'd say. Um, I'm thinking of reducing the reaction range. It's currently at 80. In realist realistic terms, it's at 20. Uh, we would want to reduce it to maybe 10 at most. I don't see how it could, how this could possibly work in our favor though. They can still fire at 40. So let's assume we start firing at 10. We might be able to still get a few extra of our own guys to shoot at the same targets. While getting their guys to shoot at uh, stupid targets. Giving us a little bit of our breather. But I don't see that working. Problem is, I, I don't really see anything really working, so it's worth a try. There are still multiple Iraqi missions left. So it would be at least nice to get something to work. Not expecting exactly victories out of these, but something that would allow us to maybe delay things actually. Have a realistic chance of fighting for a margin or something, or a draw. The enemy tanks are way too heavy for us to probably even kill them in the uh, with front. The armor hits. So yeah, that's uh don't really have high hopes for that one. Okay, how many troops do we actually have? Because it seems like we have a lot. This is an anti-air missile, right? Vision of zero, so it cannot be fired uh, at longer length than five. This seems like a drastic bullshit thing. I mean, anti-air missile can't be fired longer than the guy can, the operator can see with his own eyes. Seriously? I have a hard time believing that. Mm, we could, well, I could fire some artillery on them. Uh, mortars, rather. They're going to be using the road quite extensively, so if we could force their infantry out of their vehicles, that would help us already. So, how's it going to be? I didn't notice helicopters, so we could actually stay hidden somewhat. Yeah, no such luck. Also, they're clearly doing reaction fire on ranges I told them not to do reaction fire.
Brazil, this isn't bad. We're 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 not a we can't go toe to toe with their tanks. But they're, I'm not sure what to call the Bradleys. Are they APCs? They're sort of a mix between a tank and a APC. Well, APC, I suppose. Yeah, now comes the tank fire. Can't even see a single goddamn tank. They're more than they're about ten to fifteen hexes from re getting into our line of sight, and they're actually moving already. <sighs> Not much you can do in these situations. Uh, we'll fire what we can fire, uh, fire on, and that'll be it. Um, I I wouldn't want to start shooting with the tanks though. There are a lot of enemy tanks in uh, ready to fire. So if we could get any kind of a Unit besides that to do something that would be great. Now we're pretty much an, uh, with an army wide route as far as infantry is concerned. Trying to create a killing point here might not work, but at least I'm gonna try. I don't see us having a distraction unit of any kind, really. Yeah, these guys simply don't have the visibility to react to anything. Most of the others are retreating. Anti-air missile teams seem worthless. Key rifle squads. Why not? This hill could be our only saving grace here. They have to come through it anyway. Actually, we can't really see them. But we more or less know where they have to come through. Once in a lifetime shot before you die. At least we're gonna force them into a fighting range. It is fairly telling that I couldn't really see who was firing at me. That's more or less what it's going to be with these tanks. I 
have to start at the beginning. Shoot at what we can. If we move, we die. So yeah, just even if we have a terrible chance of killing something, still take it. Slightly depressing. No matter what you do, the end result is always the same. This could have been interesting if the visibility wouldn't uh, basically cap that five already. Ah, we have a single chance pretty much to take out one of you. And... Yeah, just not enough. And then you die. It's, it's all, it's pretty much the same. There's slight variation, but it's variation on a scale that doesn't matter. It's this is like the previous mission in a way, except now the natural visibility is also capped to such a low extent. A large number of our units, uh, the Iraqi units, simply can't see beyond five hexes. But we can see one eighth the distance that the enemy can see us, and we they're superior in pretty much every way, and we're supposed to stop them somehow. Enjoy your mission. Uh, the T-72M1s were actually nice, so if we could use these tanks against the enem enemy in a more favorable environment, it might be worth something... It's, it, that would be worth trying, uh, it, you could get some real results with that. But uh, these open desert, desert environments where we can't use small visibility shit, it just... everything works against it. Most of our units will die without ever even seeing. Uh, the best. Well, you could. Well, our, our alternative would have been to charge them while they are holding their position, but that's uh, basically charge them while when we can't even see them. Yeah, that's. Uh, good luck with that. Ah, <sighs> we might be able to do something here. That's a pretty goddamn big hit. But, in theory, the chance is there. Uh, problem being that the ones coming through here, the enemy vehicles, will be able to shoot at us. I'm not sure what's a good place for our own vehicles here. 
Also, our weapons probably aren't good enough to penetrate their front armor. Their weapons will go right through an old armor, no matter where they go. So, um, not sure how we should try to get around that little problem. Our tanks are gone. I'm not able to shoot at something with these. They move, they die. This time we don't even have buildings to re to basically hide behind. Smoke doesn't protect us. Yeah, I might be able to pull these guys away. Uh, my idea would be to use these little areas to cover our vulnerable sides. Just I can't even see the road. <sighs> yeah, basically try to cover this area, but uh, going too much further north. They can still mostly shoot at us, but we, it would limit the number of enemy units that can uh, take part in this. But Naturally, it was the command unit. <sighs> you. Well, at least my units aren't running away yet, so that's something. But that's pretty much it. It's just nothing I can do. This is, I would say, this is the worst by far because of the limited visi natural visibility. At least you have a theoretical hope of doing something. Here you literally can, well, you can charge blindly against enemy that can see you while you can't see it, or you can wait here blindly while the enemy can pick you off at its own pace. Uh, or you can hope for some kind of miracle to happen here and there to delay it. You have no artillery worth noting. You have no infantry worth uh, worth a damn. So yeah, every vehicle that moves dies. The huge amount of anti-tank. Mortar is fired maybe once, and they're being fired from. On the other side. Yeah. This didn't work. And I still don't get what's the point of having so many of these. This is at least a third of these armor massacre missions we've had, and there hasn't been anything particularly noticeable different about any of them. A little bit of a different mix of troops, but a minor difference, not, nothing that will make any kind of notable difference. They're firing at 6 hexes. Visibility is only 5, so even their infantry, some of them have to have uh, vision enhancements because otherwise they couldn't possibly fire upon me. Well, there's a Bradley. Can we do something about it? No, we have more or less 50 to 100 points in suppression, so we aren't doing shit. But 
Well, we tried. Nothing I can do. Just waiting for them to come closer so they can kill us. I think the final nail in the coffin is the fact that you can't even use smoke anymore to sort of block their vision. So there's no terrain is your only chance of forcing forcing an engagement that might have a risk to the other side. And it was recalling that something can see through the smoke, but I don't know is it what exactly is it. It seems like the guys with 40 vision can see through smoke. The Russian 20 vision certainly can. Could be something else too. I, I have just no way of knowing what it is. And that's an incredibly important tactical advantage, so it should be marked somewhere. game was sponsored by the uh, US Department of Defense or something. I wonder if that's the reason why it's so dull with these uh, American vs. Iraqi missions. Because they wanted to include a lot of these uh, missions, maybe for because it's patriotic or something. But uh, it's a different detriment to the actual game. I basically feel like for the past, this is what the third mission, I haven't got to play the game at all. And there's no real good tactical choices or things like that to be made. It's just time consuming, inevitable victory for the American side in these fights. I always had a feeling sort of that there's a reason when I play Steel Panthers for my enjoyment, I almost never played the second game. And I think uh, my recollections about these fights, though these type of situations are the reason for it. This this type of game, if Steel Panthers was this, this wouldn't be worth play, a game worth playing. It's it, it basically offers nothing for you. This feels more like um, something you you might on a smaller scale you might play something like this in a tutorial mission. <sighs> Having this be the end scenarios more or less is just baffling to me. <sighs> we get lucky, you might be able to fire upon that guy once or. And then we die. Uh, by an enemy we can't even see. <sighs> Exciting clicking next turn. This actually reminds me a little bit of Master of Orion 3. I mean the visibility thing. Uh, Master of Orion is sort of a strategy space, galaxy conquering space game. 
So you have fleets fighting fleets, and every game the combat is a little bit different. So everything has their ups and downs. They're they're not really comparable between games. But in the third game, there was some kind of a sensor system, where in the previous games you always see a battle map from from every edge to every edge, and all the ships are clearly visible. So it's tactical choices between how you're going to use your ships and choice what you're gonna put in your ships. But in the third game there was some kind of a... was there an easy M, easy M and maybe sensor thing? So you basically had a situation where you could easily go into a space battles, see nothing during the space battle while the enemy would kill you without you ever seeing. This is what it feels like and it, it was equally frustrating in that Basically, you can't do shit and just die. Congratulations. That's the tactical combat of that game. Uh, in some ways, I can see that you might think that's sort of cool because of uh, it's an option. So an experienced player could use that in certain ways to their advantage. The thing is, I feel more or less how it's going to always play out in three different ways. Either it's basically doesn't matter, which it makes it why even include the blasted thing in the entire game. That, but more more than likely, it'll go in a way that one or one of you will have the uh, significant advantage in that. So it'll go in a way where no real fights can happen because the, whoever has the advantage isn't gonna come into your center range because that would be incredibly stupid so in fact it'll just turn a lot of fights in a way where one side can just slaughter the other without the other can uh, being able to do all that much about it so yeah it, it's a mechanic that has some potential but because of the advantage it can give you is such a significant one. I'm not sure if it's a good thing. Uh, second to that is uh, naturally the fact that... Oh, come on. If you can't really use it effectively, I mean that there's always a way if you're an experienced player to sort of make it a moot point. Uh, you can always counter for that. It, it serves really no point other than to screw over certain type of uh, players or situations. We have any anti tank capabilities here? No. Maybe the biggest issue would even be that, similar to this, is that how would you even know that that's happening? Is there there's no clear way to see it? Uh, here it would be mostly, I think, can you see through smoke? Yeah, for a player who just doesn't know the mystical units or values that can simply see through smoke, how would they even know beforehand before they go into the fights and get slaughtered? They, they wouldn't. They, there's no way they could possibly know. So we get again to movie track territory. Something you do once and then you never do it again. Can I shoot a missile? Yes. Hmm. Be able to destroy this one.
Well, we damaged it a little bit, so that's something. Still didn't even get a single Bradley kit here. I suppose my overall complaint about this system is do you really want it? In a, in a game like this, I'm not sure. In a game like this that's sort of mimicking real life, I don't think you can avoid it because the real life technical, technological differences can be significant enough to make the other side totally irrelevant. Here it would be a choice between do you want that type of scenarios presented in the game all the time because they are so pointless to play. But that's a deal. But generally speaking, I'm not sure if that's a good thing. It's one thing to basically lose in a typical fight. It's another to basically not being able to do anything in a fight at all. You're more or less just blindly trying to find your enemy, or you're just sitting there waiting to die. There's nothing you can do. Generally speaking, you wouldn't want to have a game where such situations can happen. Similar to you don't want stun locking in your game, because at the moment someone realizes that you can do it through one way or another. It doesn't even have to be an actual uh, status effect in your game. It's, it's gonna be exploited to the point that there is no point in the fight. In some games I've seen, basically, if you, if you have something that triggers a specific type of animation, for example, you can uh, keep triggering it. And triggering it, and triggering it, so... Nothing ever gets done in the end. Oh shit. I was hoping I could move close with the remaining flags. No. Abandoned. Holy crap. We didn't kill them, but we sort of got them in the end. Yay. Okay. Dragons. Rifle squad. Okay, we do have to shoot at these guys, otherwise I can't attack at all. Everyone's retreating or routed or something. Not a lot, but at least I can kill one. Not. Yeah, my huge infantry forces are struggling to kill a single crew. Because we got there in the end. We're so suppressed we can't move, so yeah. And this is the fast option. If I would have played with the Americans, it would have taken uh, twice or three times as long to get to this point. Just. This isn't fun. This is just barely playing. Even in at equal army strength, this isn't that fun. I mean, large forces facing each other and taking a huge amount of time to get the resu result of the fight. The, the command system, army management system, is not built to handle large armies in a convenient way. It'll just stretch out the fights to huge length, even if they're short in, uh, uh, in how many turns they last. Alright, 
right? They're just going to wipe us out, you know. There's not much I can do about it. Still, there are only two turns left, and they haven't gone to these areas at all. So even if they would try there madly now, I might still be able to hold on to something. Uh, we don't really have to necessarily achieve all that much here, we just need to prevent them from just walking all over us. Force them to use time and uh, units to deal with us. Again, we can't even see anything. They just fire at some mystical location here. I feel the game like this. This is this is the at its best during the World War Two. Just blindly extending the tech to the nineties brings some benefits, but it also seems clear that the game wasn't really designed or balanced around that sort of technology anymore. I think helicopters are a generally positive change. Also, how Armor can be destroyed pretty much by anything. APCs, infantry, and tanks are all perfectly capable of taking down uh, heavy tanks from the other side. But these missions suck. Mm, not much happening. But uh, this could be a draw. I mean, point-wise, we're going to be slaughtered here. There's no getting around that little fact. However, uh, they can't exactly ignore us here because if they don't get rid of the infantry, I'm going to just take back the flags. Uh, they can't just walk through here either. If you walk into a and high tank squad, infantry squad, you're going to lose your own unit. Well, they are not going to be able to offer much of our resistance, but uh, might be able to do something. Now we have our secret weapon here. If there is an enemy that comes there, it's gonna be in big trouble. With any luck, the mission is gonna be extended though, because they are constantly taking new flags, so they could still get it all. Point wise, they'll definitely take this. But usually when you're attacking, the flags count for quite a bit. It's not about just taking out the enemy, it's taking control of an area. Uh, what exactly are they doing? Yeah, rallying attempts are failing every time. Again, can't see enemy, enemy is slaughtering us. And then we can't do anything. Yeah, the Bradleys are driving south at full speed. And I'm trying to reach the flags there. Oh, 
I'm going to pile as many troops as I can on this route. Might be no troops at all. Yeah, they are, they are very close. Uh, well, staying here isn't going to achieve shit. Even if we die, we need to move. Well, wasn't that exciting. Potential final turn, though. Yeah, about 11 hexes outside of our mission range comes to death. And these units have done nothing, so basically they spotted us immediately when they came, we came into their mission range. There was nothing we could do, absolutely nothing. Next, just either take the flags or end the mission. I'd rather be pretty much doing anything except playing this type of mission. This leaves a lot of such a bad taste in your mouth. This is like looking at the computer playing itself while you from time to time have to click a button to confirm that you're still looking at what's happening on the screen instead of actually doing something. Also the automatic rallying takes a quite a bit of time here. Jesus Christ. Every single crewman has to be rallied. Turn 14, yeah. Just, let's Get it over with. I have nothing I could possibly use to stop them anyway at this point. If I had, I could not move it. If I react with it, it'll get destroyed immediately. Usually it'll get destroyed if I even see an enemy. I definitely don't want to play on the American side again in these missions. It's 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 it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, but in a different way. It's it it's just tedious. This is not that tedious. This is just boring. <laughs> oh my God! Automatic rallying takes how long? There really is no point trying to ra yeah this is this game doesn't work well with these type of uh, unit numbers even in the best case scenario it doesn't work well have uh, right 3000 versus 5000 minor defeat and martyr losses that's bullshit that's only because they didn't capture everything these aren't battles uh, I'm gonna do something. I'm going to look at the 
This was crushing the guards. There's two of these still left. I want to see what the hell I'm looking at here. Main objectives, blah blah blah. blah. Mechanized division turned east and headed toward the Euphrates family, blah blah blah. Basra. First brigade versus artillery brigade. At least the scale is a little bit smaller here. But it's a, it's another air base and a river mission, so it could be it could be very similar to what we've already played. The Dinar Ridge. Republican Guards. Yeah. Yeah, armored division versus uh, Iraqi Medina armored division. So the drive to you for this could be something of a acceptable mission still. But the Medina Ridge seems like another armored rush toward uh, Iraqi forces. So just like a half a dozen of these slaughter missions that you'll have to go through. Maybe even this, but uh, hard to say. Either way, not looking forward to them. I'd rather get them uh, rid of them as quickly as possible. If they're armor versus armor missions, we can basically give up right then and there. There's nothing the Iraqi side can do. They're just sitting there waiting for waiting to die. 